I am uh, very, very passionate about today's webinar. In fact, uh, James and I were spending time talking about this very prophetic download and knew that we had to get it to you right away. Um, this mm -hmm. is hot off the press and we feel that this is the season for this word to be coming forth. And this uh, webinar is actually a prophetic decree. It's the very first time we've um, publicly over media uh, really made the official declaration, the breaking open of this prophetic decree on divine insight. So we have Dr. James Gall, we're together here on this webinar. We're going to give our viewers this word on yeah. divine intelligence. Yes. And so um, in your, in your um, like prophetic understanding, what is divine intelligence and how did it come to you? Yeah, now great. How did it come to me? So I'm going to let you say that and not me. Okay, okay. but anyway. So, um, so, you know, like in ministry, we have, okay, so I'll do a little teaching here. We minister by faith, okay? And so just because God's word says, these signs shall follow them who believe, they'll lay hands upon the sick. So you obey the word. So you minister by faith, whether there's any feeling or not. Then there's another area where you minister by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, the nine gifts, etc. And we minister out of that area. Then there is another area that you've helped pioneer and others, the glory realm, the manifested presence, many ways of expressing it. And it's another dimension. And so it includes faith, it's accessed by right. faith, and it includes the gifts. Well, in that tiered kind of uh, layered concept of uh, presentation, I think that divine intelligence is in that kind of uh, area. So for me, it's like this. Here we have, perhaps, knowledge. And, and we are to study to show ourselves approved. You know, the scriptures say right. in what in First Timothy and many other places. And we're to meditate upon the Word of God. So there is knowledge. And we are to renew our mind, uh, Romans 12. And so we renew our mind. Because when we get born again, we don't get a new brain, but we can engraft, we save our soul, the book of James says, by grafting in, it's word grafting, grafting in right. the scriptures. So here we have knowledge, but it needs to be God's knowledge. Right. Okay. And then there is another area where it gets mingled and mixed with this whole thing I was talking about before, gifts of the spirit, but now I'm going to twist it, or turn it just a little bit, the seven spirits of God. Yeah, out of Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11, and it's also mentioned twice in the book of Revelation. Revelation. That mm -hmm. the, there's a, the seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, right. which go out into all the earth. Now, that's also very important. Goes out into all the earth. Now, so here we have the gifts. So we have knowledge. We have learning, studying. Here we have gifts of the spirit that is transrational. The gifts of the spirit are not just natural information that becomes anointing. The gifts of the Spirit are transrational. That means they go beyond reason. And so it's, so you have that. And then in here, then you have the seven spirits of God. Now Could let we me read, read this. That? Yeah, let yeah. me read this Let's so read that this. you uh, will um, know that, you know, this is some of what is mm -hmm. encompassing this whole thing about divine intelligence. And as we're sharing, I want you to listen very carefully because you are going to be mm -hmm. supernaturally empowered with divine intelligence if you posture yourself for it. So the understanding we're mm -hmm. giving you today is going to help you get postured to receive. Yep. And it says out of Isaiah mm -hmm. 11, verse 2, it says, The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There's three. The spirit of counsel and strength. Four, five. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the fear Lord. Fear of the Lord. So that's seven. There's seven right there. Now, it's very fascinating because it starts off with the spirit of the Lord. Now, now we could talk a long time right. about the seven spirits of God. But here, so then we, let, let, let's, let's uh, play with, let's work with us a little bit. Because then somebody's going to get confused out there and go, wait, I thought there was one Holy Spirit. Right. Well, there is one Holy there's Spirit. seven dimensions. Yeah. But there's one God, but God in three persons. Right. The Holy Spirit is one Holy Spirit, but he has at least seven different dimensions or expressions. Right. So it's all still the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, 
the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, and and uh, the spirit and, of understanding and wisdom. Yeah. Now see, it's all fascinating here. Mm -hmm. Now the last one that's mentioned is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I actually personally believe because Proverbs teaches that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Of wisdom. And so, just like we are, we're to seek God, and we're to seek for more of the Holy Spirit, we can also ask and seek for more of the all the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit. So now I'm talking about knowledge, studying to show yourself approved. I'm talking about gifts of the Spirit, and then it, it gets like we're, I call it the gifts of the Spirit are like we're, a rainbow where one color begins and the other color ends. There's no clear demarcations because there's overlapping shades. Well, this comes up here into the seven expressions or dimensions of the seven spirits of God. But then you mingle all of this together in the anointing and particularly as we access this glory realm of God, yeah. I believe that there is another realm that is opening up. And the book of Daniel talks a lot about it. And yes. it is divine insight yeah. into mysteries. Yeah. It's secrets. divine knowledge, secrets, right. and I call it divine intelligence. Exactly. Now, um, you mentioned the book of Daniel. It was mm -hmm. interesting because this morning as I was getting ready to you know, deliver the webinar to you, the Holy Spirit took me into a vision where I saw the book of Daniel being opened up mm -hmm. and we were walking right inside of it and there was layers of understanding and so in this season that we are in as God is unfolding mysteries, revelation, insights according to his understanding, according to the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. you're going to find that the book of Daniel, if you oh, meditate on right. it, will open up um, mm -hmm. much understanding for this hour. Mm -hmm. There are going to be things in the earth that are going to mm -hmm. manifest in these coming days. The eye is not seen, ear is not heard, mm -hmm. right. neither has it entered into the heart even what God has prepared for us, but it will be revealed mm -hmm. by the Spirit in this hour. So the book of Daniel, yeah. is going to be extremely key in this Very time. And, key right you know, now. I just want to say that as we're preparing the groundwork here right now, as we're delivering this prophetic insight, I want to just um, share with you like a Bible um, a Bible uh, flow, okay. what what God does with, with revelation. Because it says in the Bible, um, that is the glory of God mm -hmm. to conceal a matter. Yeah. But it is the glory of kings. Of kings. To search it out. To search it out. So mm -hmm. we have the invitation from mm -hmm. God to go to Him and search out the things That's that right. He is inviting us to. Mm -hmm. As we do, we'll get more more right. understanding. So He's dangling mm -hmm. this prophetic insight exactly in front right. of us mm -hmm. so that we will go after Him and seek so that we will find. And so that's whether you're a scientist, whether you're a mu musician, exactly. whether you're a politician, whether a you're in economics, yeah. whether you're an apostle, a pastor, a prophet, whether your gifts of healings, yeah. yeah, all seven cultural mountains, yeah. the Holy Spirit wants to bring illumination. Exactly. Illumination. So take us a little, let's do a little romp in the yeah, book of yeah, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, before we go into Daniel, I just want to say this. There's, there's, there's three processes that the Lord takes us in when he breaks something open yeah, into the earth. This is very because, good. Because you see, God, he is complete in himself. Uh -huh. he, he fills eternity. Um, his ways, the Bible says, are past finding out. It'll take all of eternity for us to actually explore the fullness of who he is and, and uh -huh. what he knows, right? But there are certain times within mm -hmm our history, mankind's yeah. history, that he'll bring threads of revelation, mm -hmm. releasing the mysteries, the understanding right. into mankind. Right. And it says in Acts 2 that, that the Spirit is poured out upon all flesh. It doesn't say all Christian flesh. It could be unsaved mm -hmm. flesh if they're postured to receive the insights mm -hmm. that God releases into the earth. So even uh, the reason we have, have electrical circuits and That's lights right. today mm -hmm. is because of God's knowledge being released into the mm -hmm. earth. So the first thing he does, the mm -hmm. very first saying he does nothing it says in Amos mm -hmm. he does nothing except he reveals his secrets his mysteries his his understanding mm -hmm. to his servants the prophets so it comes in prophetically first yeah it's by the spirit of revelation it's prophetic and so God has all knowledge this isn't like God Something is making God, up yeah, new knowledge right. 
that it does say knowledge will increase in the last days. In the last days. So where does the knowledge increase with God? No, God has all knowledge. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He has all knowledge. Yeah. But he causes his realm of knowledge, I love this, to increase. So whatever sphere of life you're in, I want you to begin to be expecting increase of divine intelligence, divine knowledge into your life. Amen. Okay, so we are posturing ourselves today as prophets, because that's how we serve the body, is to break open a membrane uh -huh. for you. Now, there are many other prophets all yeah. over the world that are getting the same thing different layers, different uh -huh. realms of understanding on it, but it's extremely important that we embrace the prophetic season uh -huh. where God reveals, and it says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things mm -hmm. belong to God, but the things he reveals belong to us mm -hmm. and to our children, our children's children. In other words, what we're releasing uh -huh. now right. prophetically mm -hmm. is going to take substance within mm -hmm. the realm of time that will remain mm -hmm. in the realm of time and visit coming generations. So we're prophesying concerning the opening of a mm -hmm. Membrane of God releasing divine intelligence into the earth, yeah. especially into his people. So that's the prophetic mm -hmm. season. Right. Now, prophecy in itself isn't going to establish or mature mm -hmm. this revelation in the earth. That's right. So the second thing mm -hmm. that we see in scripture yeah. is after you receive a prophetic mm -hmm. insight is to also pray into it, intercede. Right. For example, Jesus prophesies or let's just even uh, take the all the messianic prophecies right. that were in in the old testament just just prophet after prophet after prophet prophesied the coming of the messiah mm -hmm. he didn't just pop into history he was birthed into history and so you have the likes of anna the prophetess who it mm -hmm. says that she was praying day and night mm -hmm. fasting some prayers never left the temple since her mm -hmm. widow, widowhood so mm -hmm. at least over 64 years or so she was in the temple praying mm -hmm. into those prophecies because she was a prophetess and an intercessor and she birthed them mm -hmm. through prayer right. and birthed jesus the messiah into the realm of time so god raises up his intercessors to birth jesus prophesied in acts 1 that um, that the uh, the Holy Spirit would come, that they were to tarry in Jerusalem until the Spirit came. They knew what tearing was all about. That meant to posture themselves in prayer. So in Acts 1, verse oh, 14, you see them all together in one place, praying mm -hmm. nonstop and continuously right. in one accord. And what they were doing was birthing mm -hmm. the prophetic word where Jesus mm -hmm. said the, the, the promise of the Father mm -hmm. will come. Right. So they were birthing it. And then, of course, we know on the day of Pentecost, it was birth. So you've got the prophetic, mm -hmm. then you've got intercession, mm -hmm. but then there is the aspect of the activation where we actually walk into mm -hmm. the fulfillment of it. And of course, in that season, I call it the apostolic arrow, it's yeah, Ephesians it's right. 4, mm -hmm. where you have the apostles and the prophets mm -hmm. together building mm -hmm. into the earth what was prophesied. Mm -hmm. And so then you need pastoral nurture. Of course. You need the theologians or the oh, teach yeah, right. teachers mm -hmm. to build it um, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. You need the evangelists to go mm -hmm. and proclaim the good news of it. Um, you know, you need all yeah. the fivefold ministry mm -hmm. gifts in their place to build it. So just so that you understand that today we're just in this season right now, the prophetic season of prophesying it, because if we don't, uh -huh. it won't come into the earth. But because we are, it's going to come into the earth. And specifically because you're in the hearing of it, yeah. it will come to you. Uh, now, so in the earlier years in the prophetic movement, we gained some understanding. I used to, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, have the last 17 years. We're actually recording this right now, actually, right in the 10 days of all. And, and so, and we're right at coming up to Yom Kippur, and then we go into the Feast of Tabernacles. So I think this is very, very interesting. This is fresh downloads that's coming to for us this season. in this yeah. new year. Yes, for five, seven, seven, yeah, five. Yeah, for this period of time. So in, in an earlier period of time, in a birthing of the modern prophetic movement, we were given understanding of a threefold process. The reason I'm going to touch this is because you just touched it in another realm. And it was revelation, interpretation, and application. application. 
Now, you would for surely get the wrong application if you got the wrong interpretation, for sure. For sure. And so the issue here becomes we are to be filled with the spirit of revelation, and that's where we're going to on this about divine intelligence, because we have to get filled. And, and, but we get filled with the spirit of then wisdom. Wisdom is the issue on interpretation. So revelation, interpretation, and then the application deals a lot with the apostolic builder mm -hmm. realm. So now you just unfolded, just like we did 30 years ago. We unpacked this three-stage process. Right. You're now unpacking, helping us unpack how something gets birthed. Right. And it's prophetic First. declaration. Yeah. Second, it's intercession. Yeah. I call it prophetic intercession. Right. Praying, praying yeah. the revelation then into being. You decree it. You, you conceive it. You decree it. You pray it, and then what happens? And then you you do it. You walk in it. If you will embrace what we are bringing to you today, and I realize we haven't totally defined yeah, it yet, but we yeah. will, okay? Yeah. We're just trying to get you postured to receive the fullness of this word that we're about to bring, because it's going to... Is going to change your life, and it's and it's bringing something. It's way bigger than an individual. Oh. It's coming into the earth. Mm -hmm. But we are going to move into application. If you embrace this today, and then you decree it, mm -hmm. birth it in your prayer, believe yep. it, it will actually start coming to you, so that you can move into it, so that you can actually experience it in the realm of time. Now, I want to mm -hmm. just touch base on something, and this will help your definition of it. As you mentioned, James, yeah. you mentioned about the gifts of the Spirit. So let me right. let me mention specifically two or three gifts of the Spirit. They're called the, the uh, uh, revelation gifts. Word of knowledge, mm -hmm. word of wisdom, and the discerning of and spirits. Discerning okay, of spirits. Those yeah. are the three revelation mm -hmm. gifts yeah. out of the nine gifts of the Spirit mentioned in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. Mm -hmm. Now, um, through the gifts of the Spirit, we've received like words of knowledge right. or words of wisdom from time. A word of knowledge is when, you know, you'll all of a sudden um, get some insight from God about, let's say, someone's got a, a headache or a lower back pain or, or a condition in them. You have knowledge that you had no way in the natural mm -hmm. of knowing. Okay, so we're familiar with that. We've received words mm -hmm. of knowledge for years, receiving words mm -hmm. of knowledge. You can receive them when you're ministering to an individual in a meeting, in, in, in prayer, um, you know, I mean, we know that realm. Mm -hmm. And also wisdom, mm -hmm. applying the knowledge or getting mm -hmm. insights on a solution or something like that. We've had those words come mm -hmm. to us from the Spirit of God, the discerning of spirits, we've had those. Divine intelligence mm -hmm. is different. And we, we were trying to find language mm -hmm. as to even how to explain it. But let me let me share this. Is a friend of ours, mm -hmm. Sean Boltz. Yep. Many of you know him. He's a prophet. And he lives in Hollywood. He works a lot in, you know, the whole realm of, of um, uh, entertainment uh, media and that, and is a prophet to that realm. But in, I think it was March of 2014, he had a visitation from an angel. Ever since that angel came to him, mm -hmm. God sent the angel to him to help him come into a new realm. Although, I'll just qu qualify this. All things ultimately come yes. from God, but come he can send God. an angel or send mm -hmm. another human being to That's help right. us. And in this case, he chose an angel to help um, Sean. Ever since mm -hmm. that angelic uh, visitation, mm -hmm. Sean Boltz has been mm -hmm. getting words that are so detailed. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, names, spelling of names, right. dates, um, uh, specific situations, solutions, words about the future. When I was talking to him mm -hmm. over dinner time just mm -hmm. a month or so ago, he said, um, you know, because I was asking him, mm -hmm. how is this coming? He said, mm -hmm. it's different it from a word of knowledge. Different. It's different mm -hmm. from it's a different. word of wisdom. I says, how is it different? Mm -hmm. He says, the best way to explain it is that you all of a sudden realize you just know your whole mm -hmm. being is filled with the knowledge of it's, things. It's Today knowledge. I was looking out at the blue sky here mm -hmm. in, in um, Maricopa, Arizona, where we're taping this and um and i looked up the sky is blue 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 i says i know everything in me knows that i know that i know mm. that that sky is blue mm. it's like that 
And in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So in our spirit yeah. nature, when we're, you're, you're born again, mm -hmm. you're given a brand new nature, your spirit man houses in you the mind of Christ. That mind of Christ mm -hmm. is getting unlocked. That's so right. it's different from just a gift it, it, of I believe, knowledge. as I was saying earlier, it builds on these realms. Exactly. It builds it's, on the knowledge of God. It builds on the gifts of the Spirit. It builds on the understanding of the seven dimensions, seven expressions of the Holy Spirit. And then, but then, as I've said, you know, faith, yeah. gifts, glory realm. Well, then there's another realm. There's another realm that's opening up to us. And this is that realm. And it is divine insight. It's divine revelation. It's divine intelligence. intelligence. And for me, now, I'm going to actually refer to something that you wrote. You wrote a book called, maybe I got the title wrong, In the Zone. Right, In the Zone. That's this the title. is a lot, my understanding, a lot like that. Because it's a dimension. Right. Now, it is, with the kingdom of God is within us. Righteousness, peace, and joy. But it's a dimension. It's a zone. It is a zone. It is, it is the invisible kingdom life. And mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm so excited, mm -hmm. uh, James, because in this season, the sons of God are being made manifest. Therefore, you see, we are not... And, and that's in the book of Romans, by the way, right. in Scripture. And we are not an earthly being trying to get into heaven. We are actually, when we're uh -huh. born again, we become, mm -hmm. our citizenship is in heaven. Yeah, it is. So we're actually a heavenly being living in the earthly realm. Mm -hmm. Well, this divine intelligence mm -hmm. is going to be made manifest in our lives day by day so that we know the mind of Christ, we live in the mind of Christ. Uh -huh. We're going to have solutions for Absolutely. government leaders. That's we're right. going to have, have solutions for business leaders. Right. Now, in... Go, go, so, go ahead, you've got something the, here. Well, but, but this is where, again, there's so many biblical models that we can look at. There's two in the old, there's many, but Daniel and Joseph. Daniel and Joseph, Are right. two primary ones yeah. for us to look at. And those are models for us. Man, I've been praying into this for years. Because I'm going, I have been prophesying for 40 years. I've been in full-time vocational ministry right now, celebrating right now, 40, 40 years. years. That means I have actually been prophesying for over 42 years, folks. And so th th these, those things, I'm, I, that's not new to me. Words of knowledge are not new to me. Words of wisdom, discerning of spirits. I love all this stuff, and I continue to teach this. But there is another realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is another dimension. There is another zone, heaven coming <sighs> to earth. Now, Joseph rested in this, lived in this, Daniel lived in this, many lived in this, and, and in the book of Daniel, it does say, those who have insight, Daniel 12, 3, will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven, and they will, those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But now watch verse 4. But as for you, Daniel, conceal these words and Whoa. seal up the book until the end of time. Many will go back and forth, and knowledge, and knowledge will, increase. will increase. Now, it's saying here, now do I have all the understanding on all of this? No, I don't. But it's saying that the book of Daniel was actually sealed up, locked up, until a period of time. Has there been understanding from the book of Daniel the entire time? Well, of course, but there's layers. There's layers and layers and layers. And in this hour, the Holy Spirit is unlocking. So I'm going to share a dream, and, and we'll continue on. So it was a year ago, or right now a year ago, yeah. on Day of Atonement, I'm given it a, a dream. I was given two dreams about this gentleman you're talking about, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, Sean in, in Southern California. But I was also given a dream where a treasure chest was given to me. And in the dream, I opened up the lid. And I reached down inside, and I pulled out something that was in there. And it was a book. And it had a latch on it, and, but it was locked. It was sealed. And that's exactly what this says right here. It says, it is that Daniel concealed these words, seal up the book. Now, it doesn't say the book is going to be sealed up forever. It says sealed up until what? The end of time. Many will go back and forth. And now it says, and knowledge. So look at this. 
as the book of Daniel gets unlocked or unsealed, it does something. It releases an increase of what? Knowledge. That's now, awesome. So I was given this dream, treasure chest. I go inside it. I pull out this book. It is a book, and it has a latch on it that requires a key. In this, I was actually given a key. Now, again, I'm wearing a key today that I... Put the key in the latch. I opened it, opened that, that latch. I opened up this book. I didn't know it was a dream. I didn't know what I was doing. It was the book of Daniel. Now, am I saying I'm the one who's unlocking the book of Daniel? No, that's not what I'm saying. No, you're a prophet and well, you have to decree that. But yeah, that, that's because true it's going to open it up for everybody. But he is, but he is yeah. opening this up and he is giving keys. Keys to what? Keys. Jesus said he'd give us keys of the kingdom. And there's so much revelation in the book of Daniel uh -huh. that God is going to make alive and real. It'll become substance to us in this hour. When you were telling me about mm -hmm. that dream this yeah. morning, I was so quickened. And, uh, and that was mm -hmm. just one year ago. So we yeah. are in the, season in the season of this happening. And That's then right. I had mm -hmm. that vision without knowing about yeah. your dream. We just shared this together this morning. I had the dream or I had the vision this mm -hmm. morning yeah. and I saw us going right inside the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. we meaning the body Us. of Christ, okay? Now, in Daniel chapter 1, and we were mm -hmm. reviewing this yep. yesterday, mm -hmm. just yesterday yep. we were getting downloads right. about this, but in Daniel 1 verse 4, we see that the, the, the king of Babylon, now in Babylon was a evil heathen nation, yep. mm -hmm. dark as they come, brutal heathenistic nation. Israel uh, was, was under their control. Okay, yeah. they were captured. They were they were in bondage actually uh -huh. as a nation to that right. whole system. But the king says, "Bring me youths mm -hmm. from the um, from the uh, sons of Israel. Bring me youths from the sons of Israel, in whom was no defect, mm -hmm. who were good looking, showing intelligence in every branch of wisdom, mm -hmm. endowed with understanding and discerning knowledge, and who had the ability for serving in the king's court." Now. This morning, I was studying more into this. I just can't get off of it. That's why I knew we had to bring this, this webinar to you right away when it's hot off the press, even though we know that this is 101 level in yeah. a way because we're just opening the membrane mm -hmm. right now. We see in part, we, we know in part, and we prophesy in part, and but you don't get the next part. Until you're faithful until with what you have. Until you release the part you have. Now, let, let me give you some nuggets today that you're going to go ballistic over, I think. Okay, it says, use in whom is no defect. Mm -hmm. James, we talked about this earlier, but that word defect, when I looked it up in mm -hmm. Strong's Concordance, it means with no moral stain. Now, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That is. even the unsaved are mm -hmm. looking for moral purity, integrity. Mm -hmm. They were looking for use with no moral stain. Now, if we're going to walk in mm -hmm. and move in, in this, this divine realm. intelligence, it's absolutely important that we get our soul mm -hmm. in a place where we choose yep. God's word and purity. God is looking for pure vessels, not compromised vessels. Yep. And it says, who were good looking. Now, I always uh -huh. thought, just reading it. Yeah, handsome, dude. Handsome, Come on, you know? yo. Now, it, of course, can mean that. <laughs> yes. But what the emphasis, when mm -hmm. I looked it up in Strong's, it means of good understanding of man's intellectual nature, good, right, and ethical. Uh -huh. So what they were looking for, as uh -huh. far as good looking, yep. was men in good standing and good understanding. You, you know, there's a little side note. But someone of good character mm -hmm. looks really good. They look really good. They look really good. Yeah. I mean, you might be a certain weight. You might be a certain height. You might have hair. You might have bleached hair. You might have brown hair. You might have black hair. You might have blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes. That's not the issue. Yeah. When you've got godly character, there is a radiance that's about that person. And quite frankly, they look good. They look good. And you know, there's something about purity on mm -hmm. a person and That's this right. is interesting because this was the king of babylon mm -hmm. who his mindset and and environment was was so wicked mm -hmm. um and yet he he wanted in the midst of his own being wicked and the environment mm -hmm. he lived in wicked he wanted mm -hmm. that which looked good yeah. that which was ethical mm -hmm. this is also a side note but 
of course, as a ministry, we work with anti-trafficking, yeah. especially with children mm -hmm. at risk. Right. And so we deal with the whole issue of pedophiles. Over in Cambodia, there's, you know, pedophiles come in from all over the world to have sex with children, mm. okay? I was praying to the Lord about it. I says, what is oh. this all about? And he says, even the wicked in heart desire the purity that's in a child. Oh, my gosh. It's a... It's the purity that they're actually out to assault. Wow. The devil is out for purity wow. he, because he doesn't have any himself. So I think that's interesting. So as believers, let's not compromise. Let's yeah. not partner with wickedness. Let's not partner with the world. Let's partner with God's purity. It is rare these days, and it is, it is, it is looked upon as a very huge, huge, massive... Um, I mean, better than diamonds, better than gold, better than anything. It's the best commodity in, ever. In, in my book, The Lifestyle of the Prophet, Which I broke that actually, down. James, we have it yeah, featured right, right, right here, here, The Lifestyle of the Prophet. In that book, I wrote this in this different style, very purposeful, because the first week is the lifestyle of intimacy, then it's the lifestyle of wisdom, then it's the lifestyle of revelation. In the first readings of the first week, I go through the cross, right. the prophetic lifestyle. Now, so what does this have to do with divine intelligence? Do we earn something? No, because through Jesus and the completed work of the cross, all things are freely given. But I believe we align so as to cooperate with the ways of God. And so we don't earn it but we do cooperate on, to awesome. align. And so I just want to encourage some of you out there, because some of you I could feel are kind of going like, well, I guess I'm not going to get any divine intelligence because, you know, I just don't know. Let's get out of that negative it's mindset. Let's get out of that negative mindset. You can receive divine intelligence mm -hmm. for your sphere. How about divine intelligence of being a godly mother? How about a divine intelligence for being a great father? We need that in every sphere of life today. Amen. I'm reminded again of mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Yes. It says the secret things, of course, belong yes. to God, but the things revealed belong, belong. to us. In other words, as, yes. soon as, as soon as a prophetic revelation is released from God mm -hmm. into the earth, mm -hmm. it belongs to anyone who will accept it by faith. Now, what you talk about in the lifestyle of a yeah. prophet is excellent teaching and I just want to encourage you all to pick up that book you can get it online just go to our online bookstore and uh, um, you know make sure you get it because it'll build build the character because I've I've known and you've known and we've all known yeah. um, those who are so gifted uh, by God who walk in by grace and faith mm -hmm. um, the gifting mm -hmm. of let's say knowledge wisdom yeah, revival healings. whatever healings but then they don't embrace the cross and mm -hmm. so therefore their life turns a corner mm -hmm. and actually partners with the world, partners yeah. with the enemy. So the water, the pure water of the mm -hmm. gift becomes defiled. And yes, we don't want that. We've yeah. had enough of that. Yeah. We want the Daniel generation so, so, who is pure and holy. So we're starting in, if the book of Daniel is going to be opened up, right. then let's go to Daniel 1. Right. And let's look at the conditions God was looking for. Exactly. To put, because he, he said an ec, that they had an excellent spirit and says that they were also learned in all of the ways of literature. Right, and it says, it says back in Deuteronomy, or um, uh, sorry, back in Daniel mm -hmm. 1, 4, it says that they were good there looking, we go. yep. they were without defect, they were good looking, uh -huh. showing intelligence. intelligence. Now this was divine intelligence, because yes. they were God's, God's men. Yeah, that's right. They were God's men, they were under covenant by God, mm -hmm. and they were showing intelligence which when I looked it up, it means insight, comprehension, prudence, success, and prosperity. Mm -hmm. When this divine intelligence comes, uh, there is going to be success and prosperity that comes with it also to anyone who embraces the essence of what's being revealed. But it says showing intelligence in every branch of That's wisdom, right. uh -huh. endowed with understanding yep. and discerning knowledge. That's right. And so... 
This was intelligence in every branch of, branch of mm -hmm. wisdom. When I looked that up, it said mm -hmm. skilled in war. Interesting Not that really. this is coming up right now, wow. especially because of all the tensions in the yeah, Middle exactly. East and around the world. Around the world. But in this, in this mm -hmm. intelligence, mm -hmm. they had wisdom which gave them um, skill in war, wisdom skilled in administration, and in religious affairs. So influence. this is going to hit all the mountains it's of all influence. all seven cultural mountains. Okay, so today... So, maybe the U.S., maybe some of the dire warnings that some are releasing. Well, what are we going to do about that? Are we just going to, like, excuse me, cave in and go gloom, despair, and agony on me? Uh, am I going to listen to the warnings? Yeah, I'm actually going to listen to the warnings, but that doesn't mean I'm going to let them be the final word. Exactly. Because they're not the final word, because we are fear. in a era of what I'm calling hope solutions. Yeah. We're to call forth the solutions that are needed for immigration. Right. Come on, why not? Yeah. Man doesn't have it. Right. Politics doesn't have it right now. But God has it. Yeah. God knows the answer. And we have the mind of Christ. Yes, so we, we have, have the mind it. of Christ. And so re recently I spent 120 days, not by necessarily full choice, but God uses everything. And I spent 120 days in my home. And I only just even recently started driving the car again. But in those 120 days, I started having thoughts circulating around on the inside of me about political leaders, about new inventions, different things, uh, uh, designs, clothing, uh, jewelry lines. I mean, it was just like all this stuff just circulating around on the inside of me. And I was going like, where is this coming from? And, uh, you know, details like, you know, well, you're going to get a phone call today from a man at 10 o'clock. And, and I go, my reasoner goes, well, but I don't even, this man, I've never even talked on the phone before. Um, and so, and, and then so, yeah, sure enough. So the phone call comes from that person 10 o'clock, and it just doesn't un, un, open, you know, opened up a whole plethora or a box, a treasure, treasure chest. So uh, I want to encourage you, as we just start, you know, we're unpacking something. This is, we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning together. But there is a dimension, and it's available now. It's available right now. And it's divine. And it is thinking God's thoughts. Isaiah says, maybe it's Isaiah 55, I can't remember for sure right now, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than yours. But it doesn't end there because this morning I had a dream. And I prayed and I asked the Lord. I said, okay, hey, we're doing this webinar tomorrow. What do you have that you want to say to the people? Now what I'm about to say is very simple. But when Revelation sits on it, then it, it's, it's otherly, it's different. Right. And so in a very simple dream this morning, I get, it's Jeremiah 33.3. That was all the dream was. Now what's Jeremiah 33.3? Call upon me and I will show you. Great, great. Call upon me. So there's a condition that has mm -hmm. to be met. And then he Call will answer Call upon me. And I will show you. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be part of the seer realm. Mm -hmm. I will show you what great and mighty, mighty things, things that you know not. That you don't know. Oh. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Wait a second. You mean there's a realm that we don't yet know? Yes. They're called solutions, inventions, yep. creativity, it's divine intelligence. And here is a model for us in the book of Daniel. And the book of Daniel is being, by revelation, opened up to us. And so whether it's going to be about the 70 weeks and the seven weeks mm -hmm. and all of that and whatever, you know, I'm, perhaps, that I know what's partially getting opened up to us is the ways of God with the, and wow. the ways of man to cooperate awesome. with the ways of God to release a higher level of 
divine intelligence. Yeah, it's heaven on earth. We're going to be uh -huh. living in it. You know, yesterday, uh, uh, I received a revelation from the Lord as we were talking about it, that even little children, like, uh -huh. I, I saw a two-year-old is yeah, what I saw did. in my spirit, uh -huh. and it, divine intelligence was coming inside of little children. Mm -hmm. Out of the mouth of babes, babes. is going to mm -hmm. come profound knowledge. Now, one example we have mm -hmm. already is Akiana. Yeah, uh -huh. I think she was, wasn't she four? I don't remember. I think yeah. when she went into heaven, I think it was mm -hmm. four, and she got divine intelligence there, yeah. ability to paint, uh -huh. um, to uh, to release into the earth through art right. what she had seen in the man, unseen dimension. But she wasn't trained. She had no training well, by man mm -hmm. whatsoever. It came as a, a divine intelligence. Mm -hmm. She all of a sudden knew what to do. Now That's she's right. older now. We actually did an interview with her when she was 11. Okay. We went into her studio and saw mm -hmm. all her things and her gallery and uh, that they had in the basement of their home. Mm -hmm. When you walked in, you could feel a realm mm -hmm. of heaven. A zone. Like you could, mm -hmm. you know, just sense that realm mm -hmm. that she had been in and mm -hmm. that she pulled out of heaven into right. the earth. Mm -hmm. But she was just a child. Now yeah. she's older now. Mm -hmm. But she also pulled down or experienced mm -hmm. in her the ability to write poetry. Really? Um, she's a famous poet, actually, okay. and will be written mm -hmm. in history mm -hmm. as one, but mm -hmm. was never trained in the literature mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. She didn't have mm -hmm. training in literature at all. She was just a child yeah. writing poetry of high level, That's right? Awesome. Now, I believe that we are going to see children and babes come into this. Mm -hmm. This morning, I looked up mm -hmm. um, the okay. word intelligence in okay. Merriam-Webster's okay. dictionary. Okay. Webster was a good old, yeah, yeah. you know, born again yeah, Christian. Um, but um, it says this, intelligence means the ability to learn or understand uh -huh. things or to deal with new or difficult situations. Secret information, mm -hmm. secret information that a government collects. Wow. Interesting. Wow. That kind of wow. got me excited when I saw that. I felt the Holy I Spirit like all over that one. Wow. But as you're saying, this is going to bring mm -hmm. divine solutions and strategies given by wow. God that is going to uh, help us. And it's, wow. you know, just such so an... Wait, would you read that again? Yeah. That's really phenomenal. Intelligence, this is out of Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, oh. the ability to learn or understand things. Mm -hmm. Now, this will, in, in the context of divine intelligence, mm -hmm. it'll be supernatural mm -hmm. ability to learn or to understand mm -hmm. because we're not going to need a university degree or anything to get the understanding no, God's going to give us. That doesn't mean that God won't use that as a part and then... And he uses that, but he amplifies and it goes beyond the Right. Natural. I mean, there's yeah. there's just two different things. Right, there's, exactly. I mean, if you're led to go to university, get yeah. a degree, whatever, do you right. go do that? Exactly. But this is different than this because this is given without right. that. Uh, the ability to learn or understand things or to deal with new uh -huh. or difficult situations. I love it. Secret information. Wow. Secret. That's good. Information that a government collects. Wow. And you know, so, I've been praying into this for years because, you know, I've mentioned this before, but as a child, I had three prayers I would pray in my youth. I prayed it in my teen years, still pray it today. And I would pray, God, give me wisdom like Solomon that goes beyond my years. I pray, Lord, give me a heart of purity that will keep me from the evil way. And then I would pray, Lord, raise up your Daniels and your Josephs to those in authority. Now, where does a child get a prayer like that? It had right. to be inspired. It had to been. We're using the word. It's that was divinely given. Right. It was divine prayer. That has guided me all my life. But it's also guided me to such a degree that it's created a measure of frustration. Because I love the prophetic in the church. I love it. I've prophesied over tens of thousands of people by this point in time in my life. But I so hunger for another dimension, including that. But to be able, it says there, the secrets, they're collected. Mm -hmm. and, and By government. By government. By those who rule. And of course, we, we know that this. CIA, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That's where I'm <laughs> Central going. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Central intelligence. Central intelligence is in the mind of Christ. Christ 
intelligence. Yes. Christ like intelligence. intelligent agents. Woo. Hey, the Holy Spirit is opening Whoa. up a whole new Whoa. chapter, a whole new order of CIA agents. Christ intelligent agents, agents. Oh, okay CIA, I so i sign up today to be a part of the new me cia too. me too because all knowledge is in christ and he wants to release intelligent agents not dabbled into this a little bit you know been able to pray and prophesy into homeland security and yeah. different things and some secrets that the Holy Spirit would show and about in the Middle East and Kurdistan and things in uh, South America and stuff like this. But boy, do I ever personally hunger right. to be postured. Yes, me too. To be able to receive another realm. Me too. I, I um, am getting a... A clear insight right now. The Lord's showing me that in this next season, there will be particular individuals uh -huh. in the earth. And that's what I, I live for as a prophet, is to be able to prophesy the opening of something so I can watch it fall, mm. especially on certain individuals who will then take it mm. and develop it. Yeah, and so there's it. going to be certain forerunners, <coughs> you know, right. like mm. Daniel and his mm. friends exactly. were, you know, marked by God for that mm. purpose. So not everyone might be in the same category, yeah. but as a prophet, you and right. I know that it's, it's our biggest dream. Like prophets um, anoint kings, mm. right? right? And so even as this word is going out yeah. right now, mm -hmm. I'm seeing the word hitting individuals who will be raised up to operate in very high levels of this particular anointing in the mind of Christ. When others see these ones that God is going to raise up, uh -huh. um, it'll become attainable for them uh -huh. to walk That's in it. realms of it as, as well, because God will have his his model sort of There's thing. There's the forerunners who the go before. The forerunners that'll do or it. Or in the book of Micah, the breakers who go before, who break open the way. Whoa. So that others can be released yeah. into it. Because, so, 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 hey, listen, as these forerunners in divine intelligence, and we just used Sean as one example, and there are several, but as these forerunners of divine intelligence, moving to this other realm, I want to, I want to give you a word of wisdom right now. Don't be jealous. Oh, absolutely. Don't, listen to this. Just because God has released to a, a certain group of people a realm of increase of knowledge, do, does that mean that God's knowledge has just decreased? No. God has so much knowledge. In fact, it says, and knowledge will increase in those days. And so if someone's sitting under something, then you go, oh, I missed it. Just using them and not me. No, they're a forerunner opening the way. And so we're trying to do that for you today. Mm -hmm. We want all of us to enter into another realm. I actually want to like, we're serving hors d'oeuvres today. Yeah, exactly. We're, uh, we're serving Holy Ghost appetizers to do what? Wet your appetite so that you're going to hunger yourself and you're going to get dissatisfied with the level you're walking in. I am so dissatisfied with the, I love the level I walk in, and I'm so dissatisfied with the level mm -hmm. I'm walking in Me because too. it's those who hunger There's and so much thirst. More. <laughs> so much it's more. available to who? Those who hunger and thirst. Yep. It isn't passivity. Right. It's those who hunger and thirst. Right. And so we're just trying to help you understand there's other levels. There's additional ways. Can I just speak into something because you brought it up about the, uh, the jealousy thing and I just want to address this and just give it's you a little bit of, important. I just want to give you a little bit of mother nurture uh, right yeah, now, okay? Is that in love there is no jealousy. Yeah. There is none. There isn't. Because you're laid down for others, right? And God will never pass us by. He, he just, he's so in love with us. Mm -hmm. He just wants to pour into us wherever our faith is open for him, he will land. But if you feel jealous yep. because someone else has something you don't, right. it's actually a sign that you're not ready mm, to handle it. And love is our greatest aim, it love, is. right? Sense, yeah. And if we don't have love, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, we have nothing, it profits nothing, and we are nothing. 
It actually so, says we're a, ga a gang gonging symbol. It's just a big noise, okay? It's a okay? big noise that draws attention to itself. Amen. And so if I could just nurture you a little bit and say, you know, when you see someone moving in it, be in their cheering section. Yeah, absolutely. You know, move them on. You know, yeah, um, on. You know a, a big gift demands a big sacrifice. That's right. And um, I was just interviewing someone yesterday, and we were um, uh -huh. talking about the subject of, of Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. And Elijah said to uh -huh. Elisha, um, ask me whatever you want, you know, just whatever you want. I'm going to be departing, so ask whatever you want. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you. And so Elisha asked for a double portion uh -huh. of Elijah's spirit. Mm -hmm. And then Elijah's response uh -huh. was, you've asked a, a hard thing. It's a difficult thing. thing. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. if you see me when I am taken from you, mm -hmm. you shall have it. Yeah. But if you do not see me, mm -hmm. you will not have it. So years ago, I did. A, I, I just studied into that for months. I, I couldn't get out of it. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why did mm -hmm. Elisha want a double portion mm -hmm. of Elijah's spirit? Because a single portion would, would have be been major, good. right? Yeah, like, right. wow. I mean, he lived yeah. with Elijah. Now, Elisha was a man of impeccable character. Mm -hmm. He was a man who gave up everything. He was a successful farmer. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he left that all behind. Yeah, he right. gave it away mm -hmm. and walked away from it to be a servant right. of Elijah. He didn't have a position of like his name in lights. Mm -hmm. No, no. He was mm -hmm. Elijah's water boy. That's Elijah's right. water boy. Mm -hmm. And he served Elijah mm -hmm. faithfully. So when yeah. the time came for Elijah to go, right. Uh, he, he says, I want a double portion. I asked the Lord why, and you know what the Lord told me? He said, Elisha asked for the double portion of Elijah's spirit because mm -hmm. he knew he needed it. Yeah, because he watched Elijah tackle Ahab, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. Jezebel, the prophets of Baal, the mindsets of the day, all of that. He watched <sighs> Elijah go through all that and realized that the single portion was good, but it didn't get the job it finished. It didn't get it completed. And he was willing. Mm -hmm. Even though he knew what it took, he, he was there mm -hmm. when Elijah has his excruciating, yep. painful times, and exactly all right. of us have them if we're on the front line, okay? Uh, Elisha saw that. Mm -hmm. He knew the cost right. of, that, of that single mm -hmm. portion, let alone a double portion. Yep. But he was willing to do whatever it took to get mm -hmm. God's purposes established. So then Elijah says, you've asked a hard thing. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't understand why it was hard because mm -hmm. It's like, it's, nothing's too difficult mm -hmm. for you. Right. Now, you gave Elijah the, mm -hmm. the first portion, and the double portion you could, you could give. So it's not hard for you. Mm -hmm. What was Elijah meaning? And the Lord said mm -hmm. what he was meaning was the call. To walk in that level of calling mm -hmm. would be difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times mm -hmm. people ask for the most insane things, like, oh, I want my name. Oh, I want to be the next revivalist. Oh, I want to host the next revival. You do not know what you're asking for. You do not know what you're asking for if you're asking for that. Because even Jesus, when, uh, you, you know, when, when, when the mother of James and John came and said, I want one on the right, one on the left, I want this, I want that. And he says, you don't know what you're asking for. That's in the Father's determined plan. You know, and I, I, I feel like yeah. just 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 uh, give your heart to the Lord in complete <clears throat> abandonment and to love's sake. And if God wants you to carry double portion or a big portion of this divine intelligence, there's going to be such a price to pay for it because a fivefold ministry gift is to lay your body, you lay your life down your life for down. the body. It is not about what the body can give to you. It's not about using what other people can give to you as far as name, fame, money, whatever. No, it's about laying your life down like Jesus did to give right. to the body. So there's great responsibility. <coughs> right. But the key is love, that you would love those who have been marked by God for that, that you would love others who are being raised up, that you would love yourself, and that love would be your greatest aim. Right. So if you discern in yourself, right. if Jealousy surfaces, yep. get rid of it right away. And say, Lord, I need more love. <laughs> Just I humble pray myself. a prayer of cleansing right now. Okay? This I is will really do that. important. Lord, I just pray for cleansing for uh -huh. any of us. And no. we've all been there. We've all yeah. been there we've where we've crossed them. lines and gone into our flesh and mm -hmm. have violated love. And we ask your forgiveness, Lord, because our greatest aim is to learn to love. And we know yeah. that we've been love failures. And yet, 
you cleanse us and you free us. Yeah. So I ask for that cleansing yeah. blood right now right to come now, upon any Jesus. part of our being that has not been in love, that has not been humbled mm -hmm. in that love, that has been covetousness, uh, walked in yep. covetousness mm -hmm. or jealousy. jealousy. So in Jesus' name, receive your cleansing now and just know mm -hmm. that you, in the midst of being disciplined, mm -hmm. taken to the woodshed, yep. that you are loved <laughs> with an everlasting love. You really are. Oh, that's awesome. In the book of James, it says, the about bitter jealousy, it says, this is not the wisdom which comes down from above. Right. But it talks Demonic. about, yeah, it says it's actually, it's ambitious, and it says it's demonic. It says it's fleshly. And sensuous. And sensuous. Ooh, it's ugly. So, but there is the antithesis. Because then, but the book of James, the first chapter, it opens up and it goes, does any man like wisdom? How many of you out there right now want some increase <laughs> of divine intelligence? Does any man, any woman like wisdom? Let him ask of God who will give freely. Oh, I love it. Freely. So here's what I've done for years. I go, I admit I lack. I declare your vast supply. Not only do I declare your vast supply, I declare it is available through Christ. And I declare that God's word says that Jesus Christ has been made known to us the wisdom, the righteousness, and the sanctification from God. So now I admit my lack. I declare your supply. I declare it is available, and I ask in Jesus' name. And now I decree, Lord. I declare, I put on the helmet, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, the helmet of hope, of salvation, and I have a happy anticipation of good. In fact, good thoughts are coming to me right now. Clear thoughts are coming to me right now because I've got on my helmet of hope. I'm not just looking at the destruction. I'm calling forth the solutions. And even together, we are receiving solutions for this generation, divine intelligence. I tell you, just like once smallpox, there was no cure. And smallpox hardly exists today because a cure was given. Al Alzheimer's exists today. But there's a solution that's coming from heaven. Amen. And it's going to be simple. I, I don't know what it is, but I know God's, I feel like God's actually releasing it right now. Amen. I believe that God's releasing a understanding, medical, scientific, uh, Holy Spirit supernatural breakthrough for particular diseases. Um, I, I believe that there's uh, divine intelligence is being released right now mm -hmm. for healing on cellular levels Whoa. where the things are even wrong or whatever, incomplete, on DNA cellular Come levels. On. And so even right now, listen to this. The Holy Spirit is going to release. Maybe it's breaking a membrane, but it's coming for autism. Amen. That's going to be huge. It's going to be so miraculous. Kids are going to be healed. They're going to be healed. Some of it's nutritional understandings. There's, there, there's, there's breakthroughs that's coming of divine intelligence concerning nutritional understandings of wellness. Mm -hmm. It's not just going to be the fad. It's not just going to be the, the experimental thing. It's going to be, because you know what in the book of Daniel, you know what also they did? What? They ate well. That's true. <laughs> that Isn't is that, so oh, true. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. They, 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 wow. ate, they ate well. So wow. there's every area. Divine intelligence wow. touches every area every of life. Area. Wholeness. That just, that just reminded me, as a year ago, the Lord gave me a very clear word. It was one of those ones that just dropped right into, mm -hmm. you know, your emotions, your mind, everything. He said, the devil has a strategy <clears throat> to kill and mm -hmm. to poison, mm -hmm. it's poison through diet. And he, he and, right. and he has made headway in this. Toxins. But I am going to give the antidote. I'm going to give wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, the Lord took me on a journey of study. Yep. I'd never studied much on nutrition before. Yeah, I, I mean, this. I've got a nursing career, mm -hmm. so yep. I've done a little right. bit of it. But mm -hmm. 
but not a big study on yeah. it. But at that season, I, I, I was day and night, day and night, day and night. And so I did this a coaching course actually mm -hmm. called yeah. Power mm -hmm. uh, Weight Loss and yeah. Re Rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. But it's a 40-day yeah. feasting uh, through what the Lord showed me. It's fasting the poisonous foods, mm -hmm. feasting on the good foods. Cleansing. And when I walked through that with God, because I did it mm -hmm. myself, yeah. My mind was bright. Oh, I was boy. getting increased oh, revelation. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait. What happened? My mind was bright, just like wait. the. Oh, what? No, 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 okay. no. Okay. Wait. What happened, Patricia? Your what? Mind. My mind got, got what? Brighter. Bright. Yes. Illuminated. Right. There was another dimension that was open to you. Recently, I actually went through detoxing right. from medications. Right. When I got detoxed pretty intense from all of these medications, there was something else that happened. I don't fully comprehend it yet, but I know there were two other things I was getting detoxed from. This is all real fascinating, and you're wondering, well, where in the world is this thing going? Well, we're just following the Holy Ghost, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, and we follow the lamb wherever he goes. We're and so some this is a conversation. <laughs> yeah. So so I believe that I either started or I got another level, whatever, in detoxing in a couple of areas. One, the political spirit in the church. Yep. I mean my discernment level just like I went just like whoosh, it opened up to me in a different realm. And I was just like, oh, 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 this is one of the strongest things. It's, it's not, it's not, yeah, the religious spirit. Oh, it's the political spirit in operation in the church. And I started actually, I feel like my brain, right. this is why I landed on this. My brain started getting detoxed wow. from church politics. Second thing that started happening in getting detoxed. That one was a total surprise. Mm -hmm. Is that literally my thinking started detoxing. Yep. And and I started entering into a different dimension yeah, yeah, yeah. of like creativity and going thinking otherly. And now I'm gonna be real vulnerable right now. I have fought really, really, really hard on not being a victim, but I've gone through some extreme issues for 12 to 13 years. I feel like my brain, chemically maybe, maybe it's chemical, got, has gone through, going through some detoxing that deals with trauma. Now, when that happens, I just like, so there's space in here. There's space in here now awesome. for new thoughts. And God's new filling ways. it with revelation. And he's filling it with new levels awesome. of revelation. Awesome. Um, I was getting um, a word of knowledge just earlier, this understanding that every every move of the Spirit, when mm. new things come, they get opposed all, also. Oh, yeah, sure. I just want to give a warning oh, because there's going to be some some intellectual downloads that come from God himself mm. that are going to hit the medical field, that are going to hit yeah. the business field, mm. that are going to hit government things. That the Like I just saw this clearly, that there's going to be members in the church that are going to rise up against it and take big stands against it, saying it's demonic. And this is nothing new under the sun. This no. has happened in every move of no. God. But I want to warn you about this ahead of time so that when <clears throat> it comes, you'll discern it. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Go mm. to God, rightly mm. discern things, because when a new move of God mm. comes, uh, the enemy takes advantage of that mm. too and does put his deceptive things mm. in there too. So we have to hold fast to yes, that which do. is good. We have to mm. discern yeah. that which is of Test God. Test all but things. But at the same time, don't become an enemy of mm. God by rising up against that which he is doing. I want to okay. cover, um, James, I want to yeah. cover Mark 4. Oh, okay. Because in Mark 4, Jesus calls the parable of the, the sower. Oh, that's good, yeah. Um, the parable of all parables. He calls it the parable of all parables. Mm -hmm. He said in, um, in 
one of the verses here that yeah. if if you oh yeah in verse, verse 13, 13 he says do you not understand this mm -hmm. parable if not how will you understand all the parables yeah, okay that's the key right there this is the key mm -hmm. so there's a key in this one mm -hmm. but what i want to draw out of here is that when he was speaking because he spoke in parables which was mm -hmm. mysteries right because he wanted to keep those who were not true seekers out of the divine intelligence. That's right. It the would divine be insight, right. Otherwise they could apply it mm -hmm. wrong too. That's right. So after he shares his parables, the disciples did not get it. They didn't get it. So mm -hmm. they didn't just say, oh, well, I don't mm -hmm. get that one. I'll go to another seminar some other time, you know. <laughs> but they actually went to him privately and and said, give us understanding. We don't mm -hmm. understand. Would uh, you give us understanding? Mm -hmm. His response was, mm -hmm. um, he said, to you, yep. in verse 11, has been given the mystery yeah. oh, of the go. kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, get everything in parables. Now, this is a key for you, uh -huh. because we're talking about divine intelligence right now. God is offering prophetically, we are prophesying it, we are prophesying it into the earth, just like Amos uh, 4, the prophet said that God will do nothing, nothing except he reveals it first prophetically. The secrets get revealed first prophetically. So that's what we're doing right now. As soon as you discern that it's prophetic, take it. Say, I'm, I'm going to take this. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry for this. Start praying into it and decreeing into it. But if you will seek the Lord, now go and take this prophetic word and go to him privately. Mm -hmm. go, go to him go privately to him. go to just him. like they did mm -hmm. and he said to you mm -hmm. as you go to him privately to you it has been given the mm -hmm. mystery of the kingdom of god and so this is one of the postures that if you take this posture you will be able to grow into the revelation of divine intelligence. He is going to give you, he's going to unpack it for you. He'll give you insights. I went to him this morning. I said, mm -hmm. God, I just got this, this whole thing downloaded yesterday, mm -hmm. just yesterday, yeah. uh -huh. but I want more. Mm -hmm. And I sought him for more yeah. and I got download after download within just an hour's time because he will be so faithful to us. In the time of rain, ask for rain. I think that's out of Zechariah or something. Yeah, Zechariah 12. Yeah, Thirteen. and so, and then the other thing, James, is mm -hmm. the power of tongues. Oh, absolutely. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, um, uh, Paul said, pursue love, mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. <laughs> pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak mm -hmm. to men, but to God, mm -hmm. for no one understands but. In his spirit, in his he spirit speaks, speaks mysteries. mysteries. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Every time you speak in tongues, you are actually speaking or decreeing Absolutely. mysteries. Absolutely. And you're in the earth, even though your spirit man is heavenly and divine. You are in the earth in your physical body releasing through the words that yep. you speak, the mysteries, the secrets Amen. of divine intelligence. I Woo. gotta tell you a testimony. <laughs> I have a, a, a young friend of mine that I'm you know, involved in his life, and uh, there's a successful businessman. Well, he's found favor in this successful businessman's eyes, and so he's been mentoring him because he's a, this, this successful man has started multiple businesses, he has uh, made a good deal of money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this young man, who's my friend, is thinking when he's having these mentoring sessions with this business entrepreneur, that they're gonna be like the seven keys to wealth or the seven keys to how to build a business. Do you know what he teaches him? Hmm. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. Wow. He says, there's your key. Wow. So he's teaching him how to and then pause and interpret his tongues. Wow. Now, Oral Roberts said, he, he took someone on a tour of years ago of Oral Roberts University. And he said, you see this building? You see this building? You see this building? It all came by tongues and interpretation of tongues. Wow. And so there is a realm of unlocking divine intelligence, mysteries, the mind of Christ. Wow. And just, I thought that was fascinating. My young friend is being mentored 
on how to be a successful business entrepreneur. What is this guy teaching him? I was like, hey, what'd you learn tonight? How to talk in tongues and interpret them. I said, wait a second, what? Amazing. You mean it wasn't like, you know, like uh, you start a business plan and you, you know, no, I mean, I'm sure this man knows all that realm. Right. And he says, no. So, make bala kapa, maybe what jipi kapamunti kamonyande, but te malotu chepe, shaboto malende, atara bulgonde, pochebe pasarte, pochiki mutkuti bata, bulia de kamaliandai. I, the Lord, am putting upon my people a new realm of clothing, as it was in the book of Zechariah with the high priest, that they had to unwrap the old turban off of the mind, and then they had to put a clean turban upon the mind. I am taking off of my people right now the unclean turban of religion. Wow. The unclean turban of unbelief the unclean turban of self-doubt and victim mindsets. And I will put upon my people a new clean turban that are my thoughts, my ways, my understandings, my solutions in a period when the world goes awry and the world seems to be in a place of chaos. I am doing a transition, taking off the wow. unclean, and I am clothing my priestly prophets with a clean turban to Thank conceive you, Lord. the Lord's thoughts. Thank you, Lord. Now, wow, that just what a came, word. That, that came out of tongues, and tongues interpretation. interpretation. And I tipped over out of what? Having meditated on Zechariah chapter 4. Right. So, but the Holy, you, you store up the word and then you give the Holy Spirit something to breathe on and he illuminates it and he brings you into another dimension. You know, as you were um, unpacking that, I just had a vision of many people are going to be called to just storm in their, in their prayer room or their living yeah. room or whatever. And I saw them holding their cell phones recording the tongues, cool. and they would do tongues for a few minutes and then interpret it, tongues and, <laughs> and, and, and then interpret it. And, oh. and, and the gift of interpretation of tongues no. has not been really highlighted no. much in the body of Christ, not but it's going to for... come. I think you just prophesied it open. Yeah. There's an Whoa. opening of this happening right now. Now, I have awesome. a tool, tool for you because some of you, you might not speak in tongues yet, okay? It is one of the most powerful gifts ever. If you um, go... Uh -huh. On the uh, button, I think it's just below your screen there, uh, called uh, Gifts for You. It's a, it's a button that you can push. It's got resource in your store or something. Anyways, there is a list of items that will help you get trained in mm -hmm. the things that we're talking about right now. Yeah. One of them is my little book on tongues okay. and the CD on tongues. Mm -hmm. And we're going to uh, um, offer that to you. It is powerful. That gift is powerful, and I highly recommend getting that, listening to it, reading it, and then activating. Most people, by the time they finish listening to that CD, speak in tongues. The other tool that I want you to have is my mentor, Mary Goddard, mm. who has gone on into glory yeah. many years ago. She is one of the best thorough teachers mm. on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I have her original right. teaching that I sat under right. when I was a brand new Christian 38 years That's ago. Awesome. I have that original teaching right. on download, and we're going right. to offer uh, that online to you too. And it's all nine gifts, how to operate in all yep. nine gifts. It's one of the most sound biblical yep. teachings you'll have, but it will activate you beyond anything mm -hmm. else. It is, it is, it is a, a, a phenomenal teaching. Um, I encourage you to get that because it'll give you a huge study on the gifts of the Holy Spirit and will help you understand the gift of the interpretation yeah. of tongues. We gotta go and back there. We, we gotta we gotta we reteach re it again. Yeah, we do. And so that mm -hmm. we can and I need to reoperate it again. Yeah, yeah, I've I not been too. operating it in I need to, I need to do but it because it says secrets yeah, will be revealed that way. Paul the Apostle in First Corinthians fourteen says, I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding. And it's in that order. Yep. So it's praying in the spirit dimension, and then you simply follow it up with the understanding. And what the, the way Kenneth Hagin would teach it is that two nickels equal a dime. 
And so tongues followed by interpretation right. in that sense equals Equal prophecy. prophecy. Yep. I was taught that too. I, I just, um, I'm excited because, um, I mean, we were just talking about this yesterday mm -hmm. and I was sharing with you, you know, being open and vulnerable that I've been yeah. um, discouraged lately, even with tongues, because, you see, I used to, mm -hmm. years ago when yeah. I was a new Christian and yeah. over the many years, years, I would pray in tongues for sometimes hours, hours. but I would be completely engaged in my mm -hmm. mind as well. And mm -hmm. I'd be praying in tongues and being mm -hmm. alert to the spirit. It was like I was brought into this focus on the Lord mm -hmm. for hours as I was praying in tongues. Now. I like praying in tongues, so oh, yeah. I pray in tongues lots mm -hmm. to this day. Yeah. But what my frustration mm -hmm. has been is while I've been praying in tongues, mm -hmm. I felt distraction right. in the mm -hmm. mind. Right. Now, the beauty of tongues is that you can pray in tongues and mm -hmm. your mind can be somewhere else and That's it can true. still be beneficial. Yeah. But it leaves the mind unfruitful. Mm -hmm. But if you are praying in tongues and engaged at the same time, mm -hmm. then your mind opens up to the mysteries of God. And um, I just feel a fresh new uh -huh. wind coming yeah. on many of us, including you and yeah. Yeah, James yeah, yeah. and I, I, I and I'm others. Stepping back We're into, stepping back uh, yeah, into uh -huh. this where we'll go back into Absolutely. it for hours with tongues, interpretation uh -huh. tongues. And I, I'm going to use my cell phone and yeah. record it all because That's there's going to be some That's very good. good mysteries that will be recorded. Okay, so for me, it's like, uh, this is an old illustration, Alka-Seltzer. Drop, drop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> it's effervescent. Yeah, yeah. And so you, you pray in the spirit, but here's, then there's something that bubbles up. It bubbles up, it bubbles up, it bubbles up. Now, what we're, I'm going to tie this back to divine intelligence. Because as you pray in the spirit, it says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself says he builds up himself. So there's many different, I actually studied at least 20. Now, Bishop Bill Hammond has a book out today on 70 reasons or something like that, you know, to be right. praying in tongues. I have like a teaching on like 20 scriptural values. Right. I also have a two CD on rediscovering the gift of tongues. That's absolutely amazing. And because uh, I used to spend, Holy Spirit said to me, do you want the spirit of revelation? This was years ago. And I'm well, of course I do. And he said, then pray in the gift of tongues two hours in one setting. Yep. Now, but I couldn't do two hours. So I had a stopwatch back then. I'd do 15 minutes. I'd do 15 minutes. I'd do 15 minutes. At the end of the day, I had two hours. Right. And then he would say to me, and then he eventually said to me, he says, that isn't what I said. Yeah, all in one goal. Yeah, he, he said, all in one it. setting. Yeah. But what I had to do was build my spiritual muscles. Yeah. I eventually got to where I added singing in the spirit. Yeah to praying in the Spirit. And when I added that, it shifted it. And then I would end up doing four, six, eight, 12 hours. And you eight, can feel when hours. it shifts. It's like this yeah, grace accelerates everything and you just go for it. Now, when I'm, we're, we're tapping into an issue. This is, taught, this is tapped into divine intelligence. This is a possibly one of the keys of activating divine intelligence. Exactly. Part of it is, it again, one of the keys. Purity, we've talked about out of Daniel chapter 1, that they, they were excellent in spirit. Another one is grafting the Word of God into our soul because we've got to have the basis of God's knowledge for the Holy Spirit to blow on. Now we're talking about another dimension where we're going to activate. Now, what you have to do first on this other issue of where the mind's like going like this, I understand that really, really, really well because I have a real fast spinning mind. I have to quiet my soul before God. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. So I have to cast my anxieties off onto the Lord. And then as I do that through worship, and I enter into his presence. By the way, someone's coming under anointing right now for poetry of his presence. It's poetry of his presence. It is divine intelligence, and it's going to be in a prose, in a style that you are not trained in. And it's going to be very delightful and extremely helpful uh, for many people. And But it's poetry of his presence. And there is an effervescence then as we pray in the spirit, we cast our anxieties upon the Lord, we quiet our soul before him, and then we pray in the spirit. Then there is this afterglow or residue or this after effect to where, oh, 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 yeah, oh, 
and you enter into another zone, another realm, another sphere. Now, I've seen this before, that it's like before me again right now. Now, right now I have my eyes closed. I can open my eyes, but I'm not going to right now. Just, and I'm not even going to explain why. But years ago here at one of your first God's Media conferences, I prophesied 3D, but then I started prophesying 4D. I didn't know what I was talking about. I've seen it several times since. An invention that would be given, 3D, where it would be these screens that are, that are oval. And then I started prophesying 4D, where there would be these surround, surround sound, surround screens. Surround screens. And then there would come another dimension where when would be in, in like in the movie, wind would actually, you would feel wind. It'd be another dimension. And there is whole levels of experience. Mm -hmm. How about this? See, years ago, the, okay. the, 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 the cyberspace uh, highway, I mean, it's like it didn't exist. And then it was birthed into the world. And now it connects the entire world I know, with it's knowledge. Just amazing. With knowledge, knowledge is increasing in the last days. We're getting ready to uh, wrap up a little bit right now, but we want to um, release a, a, a prophetic impartation to you in just a few moments. I want to feature a few things that will help. These are just tools that might help you if you want to grow in your spiritual sensitivity and understanding uh, through scriptural foundations biblical-based mm -hmm. teachings, yeah. and uh, we have uh, James Gall's uh, teaching on the angelic encounters, and I, I'd wanted to share with you about um, an angelic encounter that Johnny Enlow had yeah, just sure. prior to Rosh Hashanah mm -hmm. this year, and he actually saw an angel, Raziel, come um, and a company of like angels mm -hmm. that were coming to bring mysteries and secrets, yeah. and we don't have time to unpack that right uh -huh. now, but historically... And bi biblically, there can be support for angels with names that mm -hmm. might not even be mentioned in the scripture. In the scripture. We don't have time to unpack that yet, but if I you want there. more information mm -hmm. in this book, mm -hmm. Angelic Encounters, it is, it, is, it is very, very clear teaching on uh, not only Angelic Encounters, but how to groom yourself mm -hmm. for That's them, right. how to unpack mm -hmm. them, how to discern them, mm -hmm. and it's all biblically based, okay? Yep. Then James Gall's book on the seer anointing. Um, this is a, a, a big seller, actually. This yeah. book is um, has has been helping so many different people. Then we've got the lifestyle of the prophet. We already mentioned that. This is my uh, glory school. Uh, I received that through a 30-day visitation of the Holy Spirit a number of years ago. Foundational teaching on accessing the glory realm that is available to every by believer, faith. every believer by faith, accessing it by faith. This is my uh, one of my newest books, Developing yep. Your Five Spiritual Senses. The yep. foreword is by Dr. James Gall. This is how you can cultivate, not only discern, mm -hmm. but cultivate your five spiritual senses. We also have this book, it's called Wisdom Calls. I, um, I took years, for years, I would yeah, read every single day mm -hmm. the first 10 chapters of Proverbs, Proverbs because yeah. I longed to have wisdom, yeah. I wanted wisdom. And uh, so I just loved reading and declaring that those, those mm -hmm. first 10 Proverbs. This book I wrote is a paraphrase of the book of Proverbs, the whole book of Proverbs, written in easy to understand language. Even children, the younger generation yep. can understand that. This is James Gall's book, Living a Supernatural Life. Yep. Um, again, Lifestyle of a Prophet, Angelic Encounters, yep. the Seer. We already discussed yep. those. Now, I want to, um, we are going to pray for you in just a moment, but I want to invite you to sow into this message. And under your screen, there is a donate button. As a ministry, we love to give. That's why we do webinars like this. That's why this one has been made available to everyone at no cost. At what? At no cost. Oh, good. We are giving this for everyone who awesome. wants to watch it for free. But there are expenses, yeah, sure. big expenses, huge expenses in creating media. And the Lord has revealed to me that in this season, we are going to see 
revival through media. There's going to be moves of God all over the world through media. The, the, the presence of God, the teaching of God, the impartation of the Lord is going to be released through media. So as a ministry, we are committed to producing media and to distributing media that is going to bless the whole world and is going to bless you. And we want to give it to you. Now, we try to follow the leading of the Spirit. Sometimes the Spirit of God will tell us to, to charge a fee, you know, and he wants to test people's responses to that. Sometimes I hear people say, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord wants to test your response on that to say, will you trust me for what is needed to, to, to right. pay that fee? Okay. Other times the Lord leads us to charge nothing. He says, I want you to, to um, foot the, the bill yourself. You know, believe me for everything yourself, and I will look after all those needs. And I don't want even any partnership with my people. In those cases, we don't even ask for anything. There are so many media clips that you can yep. watch on xpmedia.com yep. that there Huge. is never an ask, asking for an offering or anything right. in it. Never. We foot the bill for that. It, we, we have a whole media department that we fund, you know, that we pay for every single month, you know, that take, you know, that's what it takes to produce media and to get it out there. At xpmedia.com, it's a di distribution portal where we distribute media 24-7 to the nations of the world and hosting over 200 ministries that we release their media wow. out for them. Very wow. seldom will you ever, ever hear wow. of an appeal for financial blessing. We try to do that through premium subscriptions so that we can offer everything for free, you know, as far as the media that's up there. And then we have extra benefits for premium subscribers. And I would highly recommend and invite you to become a premium subscriber because it gives you extra benefits for sure, but it also helps monetize the massive expenses for running an operation like that. And I just want to boast on on Shirley Seeger, one of our mm. founders, one of the key founders, mm. who has worked for years, worked for years mm. sewing all of her time into it without uh -huh. taking any income wow. from the company at all, sewing into it. She's the one behind all the the, the programming of it, mm. the daily grind. She works over 12 hours a day, every single day, on just getting the distribution of media. Why does she do that? She does it because she loves the Lord, That's because awesome. she loves his mandate, and because she's a laid-down lover and is, is, is totally abandoned to his purposes. But I want to invite you to partner with us, because we, we honestly can't do this by ourselves. The reason we can do what we do is because of partners all over the world, all the time, that help us on a monthly basis. And I'm making an appeal to you right now. I want to do more of this. I want to even offer more mm -hmm. for free. But I mean, just this one, this one webinar, you know, costs us probably um, just to pull it together and to distribute it and to do all the, the programming on the interfacing and all of that and the bandwidth and everything is probably going to come out at about twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000. Well, we don't have that available all the time, although we believe God for it. But if we can increase our partnership, we can do more and more and more of this to release free all the time. And so would you pray about becoming a Breaker Team partner with this ministry? Or at the very least, could I ask you to make a, a sacrificial, generous offering um, towards media revival, media expansion? This prophetic word, I've been a prophet, I've been called as a prophet by God for many years, and I, you know, I'm limited, you know, maybe in, in, in the calling as far as what he's called me to do is more like a discerner of the time. So he shows me when he wants to break mm -hmm. things into the earth mm -hmm. and then I'll take a season of yep. prophesying that. I'm not one yet that has prophesied a lot of names, addresses, uh, real detailed mm -hmm. personal prophetic words. I've had some of those, but my main prophetic yep. thrust mm -hmm. is in discernment of times. This particular word... I, I feel so mandated to prophesy and I will do my very best in every way I can to get this word out to the body because I know the way the prophetic works. It will not happen if the prophets don't prophesy. God does nothing in the earth until the, the, the prophetic is released. So sometimes we do it like today. This is an initial 
appetizer on this prophetic word, but then we'll build teachings, which is another aspect of prophesying. We'll build television programs around it, another aspect of prophesying. We'll build um, maybe seminars and workshops where we can activate it, another way of prophesying it. And so we're going to do whatever we can to get this word out. We're committed. That's our calling to the body of Christ, and we will do that. Will you help us to do it? so that we can go full force into what God has up for the days to come. It is our privilege to offer you this for free. But can you now, out of your own free will, give a sacrificial honoring offering to the Lord for the advancement of his kingdom in the prophetic and in media so that we can continue to reach the nations for him? Now, we want to release prophetic decree over you. And James, as you get words of knowledge for specific things, I know we've already had some today mm. in the program. Just feel free to give them in this last couple of minutes as okay. we wrap this up. But here's a, a mm. prophetic decree over you right now that I feel inspired of the Lord to give just generally to all of you. The Lord says that his divine intelligence mm -hmm. is on a plate. I see it like a platter mm -hmm. right before you and it's full of all different aspects of divine intelligence. And he says he's opening your eyes, the eyes of your spirit to see. He says he's giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that you can look at the platter that is before you and receive into yourself that which you see. The Lord says, if you see it, you can have it. And even today, as, as hunger has been surfacing in your heart, as that hunger intensifies, the Lord says he will fill to the measure of your hunger, he will fill you. Amen. Amen. Let me just clarify one thing. Earlier when I was just kind of meditating or in this zone, I started talking about Zechariah out of the Old Testament. I said Zechariah 4. I just looked it up. It's Zechariah 3. Okay, I just want to clarify that. But I'm going to read this to you in my part of closing. Now, it's, it's about Joshua. This is not Joshua with Moses, but this is another Joshua who's called the high priest. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at the right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who's chosen Jerusalem rebuke you, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel. He spoke and said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. Again he, he said to him, See, I've taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with festal robes. Then I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by. I speak this right now again. I say the Holy Spirit and even the angels of the Lord, like here in Zechariah 3, are unwrapping the unclean garments off of us. And then in place is wrapping around us this realm of the mind of Christ, divine intelligence. Watch verse 7, 6 and 7. And the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you, if, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will perform my service, then you will govern my house, and also have charge of my courts, and I will grant you free access. access among these who are standing Whoa. here. Now that's a whole big subject, what that's referring to, um, among these who are standing here. Now let's keep it simple for right now. 101, the Holy Spirit and angels of the Lord are present to unwrap off of us church political mindsets, religious spirits, victim mindsets, trauma, and many other things that he's going to wrap on us in the helmet of hope of salvation. And we will think the very thoughts of God. 
Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, think these thoughts of divine intelligence. This has been an awesome webinar. I can feel the presence of the Lord right here in the studio right now. In fact, I feel a little bit teary. I don't even understand that, except I believe it's the pleasure of the Lord that he's been touched by the releasing of this word. And he's touched by your response to the word, your hunger for it. He just loves you so deeply beyond anything that you could ever, ever imagine. Thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. And we pray that as you move yeah. forward, that you will come to know with intimate acquaintance with divine intelligence. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We'll see you next time.